Hello folks, welcome to Coders Den. Today we are going to implement a deep learning project in which we are going to colorize black and white images using GANs. So if you are new to our channel, please consider to subscribe our channel. So let's see how to implement this deep learning project. So generally, the input to our GAN model would be a black and white image and it is going to output a colorized image. So isn't it fantastic that how our model is going to learn that that particular object needs to be colored yellow or a green. Let's see how we are going to go through all the process in order to make our model learn in an efficient way. So if we talk about GANs and particularly why GANs because there are other deep learning models such as auto encoders, convolutional neural networks to implement this problem. But due to the accuracy and the amazing results produced by GANs really inclined us to implement GANs for this particular problem. So here we have a generator and discriminator as to components of GANs. The generator turns noise into an imitation of the data and, the, and then tries to trick the discriminator. And the discriminator tries to identify the real data from the fake data. So the discriminator classifies into a real data and a fake data. And the main goal of generator is to fool the discriminator. So coming to the motivation for implementing this project. So the main motivation for implementing this project was that we wanted to make recolorization of old black and white images an easy task because it is not easy for everyone to use complex editing softwares to colorize their images. So if I talk about the overall design of our project, there were two major components. One was generator and the other was discriminator. So for generator, we are going to input original grayscale image and it is going to output generated image, which would be RGB image. And we are going to pass on the generated RGB image along with the original RGB image to our discriminator and our discriminator would going to figure out whether it was a fake image or a real image and this whole cycle would run for further epochs. So this is really important to find out that what was the methodology, what were the follow-up steps which we implemented throughout this project. So talking about the data set, we have around 3000 RGB images from various domains like mountains, forests and cities and we are going to convert these RGB images to grayscale which, we, which are going to act as labels for our model. In the first step, we ran the generator once and the discriminator twice because reading different literature on GANs, we found out state of the art technique that discriminator needs to be run more number of times than generator. If we talk about discriminator and generator, they both act as an adversaries. One component tries to maximize its goal over minimizing the other component's goal. So if we talk about discriminator, it tries to maximize its loss by classifying generated images accurately. And the generator tries to minimize its loss by improving itself to such an extent that it can fool the discriminator. So basically, fooling the discriminator is the major goal of generator. After that, in the fourth step, we are going to train the discriminator in a such a manner that it will output the probabilities which are closer to one, which means that it is going to classify all of the images as real images. That means that our generator is trained very well that it is producing such an images that are not being classified by discriminator. Which sum up that our discriminator is being fooled by the generated data from generator. Now let's see how discriminator and generator structure is being implemented theoretically and using code perspective. So the generator will take a grayscale image or you can say a black and white image and it is going to output an RGB image. And the generator is going to have an encoder decoder structure and the layers would be placed symmetrically 
the encoder will take grayscale image and produce a latent representation z which you can see in the image and after that the decoder's job would be to produce an rgb by enlarging the latent representation which was produced by encoder so here we have an encoder decoder structure moreover it is an important step to mention over here that we are following a unit architecture which is used to segment the objects from the images because if we talk about the images being input to the generator we have an image which have different objects like bird flower or any other greenery so these objects are being segmented using unit architecture so if we talk about unit architecture it has two parts the first path is the contraction path and the second path is symmetric expanding path so the encoder is being placed on the contraction path and the decoder is being placed on symmetric expanding path so the encoder is just a traditional stack of convolutional layers which has max pooling layers and the decoder enable precise localization using transposed convolutionals let's see how this whole scenario looks in our code so firstly we downloaded and processed the data so if we talk about the data we formulated it in a grayscale image and an rgb image and by importing tensorflow because the whole project revolves around this library we kept the batch size of 64 image size of 120 and we split it the data to 2500 images because using all 3000 images was a computational overhead so over here what we tried to use using pill library that we convert the rgb images into a grayscale image in order to have both grayscale image and the original rgb image so here we formulated an x and y for our model and then we splitted the data set for training purpose and the testing purpose now let's see how our generator was implemented if we talk about the tensor shape of our generator it had batch size which i told you earlier was 64 and 120 by 120 which was our image size and initially it would be one because the input to the generator is a black and white image and the output is going to have a shape of batch size 64 120 by 120 image size and 3 because it is going to be an rgb image so let's see that we have a three convolutional layers we have convolutional 2d layer on each and the leaky relu activation function is being implemented on each layer subsequently bottleneck the latent representation z which we saw earlier has a stride of one activation function 10h and the padding is similar to the convolutional layer 3 after that we are going to concatenate all the layers in order to form our model and here during the concatenation we use the activation function relu moving towards the discriminator structure so if we talk about the discriminator structure for our project we have a standard convolutional neural network which is used for classification because as i told you earlier the discriminator is going to find out that whether the data input to the discriminator was real or fake so it will take an image and output a probability of whether the given image was original or it was being generated by generator now coming to the code perspective of discriminator so you can see that it is a standard convolutional neural network in which we have four convolutional 2d layers the input layer has a size of 32 subsequently followed the hidden layers which have 64 128 and 256 size after that each layer has a max pooling layer after that these all layers are being flattened and throughout these steps relu activation function is being used and on the output layer we have sigmoid in order to classify the inputs whether it was a real image 
or a fake image. Let's see what were the loss functions being implemented for generator and discriminator separately. So for discriminator, you can see that we have implemented binary cross entropy as a loss function for discriminator and for generator, we have implemented mean squared error as a loss function. After that, we have optimized our generator and discriminator using Adam. If we talk about the training step, which is really a crucial step for implementing GANs. So here you can see that we are going to call the generator over here, then the discriminator, and here we are going to calculate the losses with respect to generator and discriminator. And the losses are being appended to the list of discriminator and generator separate. After that, we apply the optimizers for generator and discriminator and then we compile both the models generator and discriminator. If we talk about visualizing the generator model, here you can see that after the input layer we have convolutional 2D layer and then we are implementing leaky ReLU as, as an activation function over here. After that we have concatenation of the previous layers. So if we talk about the number of epochs which were used for training our model, they were altogether 150 and we were really mesmerized by the results produced by our model. So let's see that what were the state of the art techniques which we implemented in this GAN model. So these were the four techniques which are also present in the literature and is also recommended by the researchers in order to implement the deep learning model. So we used soft and noisy labels. We used Adam as an optimizer which I showed you earlier in the code and we also trained the discriminator more which was really twice than the generator and we used ReLU as an activation function which would really help us to avoid sparse gradients because it provides LU decomposition. Now moving to the results which we generated using a for loop and we used matplotlib in order to generate all the results. So, so let's see so let's see what was the result of all the hard work we did in order to create this whole structure. So let's see what were the results which were produced by our model. So here you can see that the grayscale image which was input to our generator and the colorized output from our generator was really closer to the ground truth of the RGB original image. Secondly. In the second image, you can see that how it really segmented the trees and colored them green. And the other objects are colored separately. So this was really a training process in which our model learned to color different objects separately. And here you can also see that the sky is being blue and the clouds are kept white. So this is all the learning process of generator in order to create a real looking images so that the discriminator can't really figure out that whether it is a generated image from a generator or it was an original image. If we talk about the future work of our project, we are going to take it a step ahead to colorize the images of our grandparents in order to make the picture more memorable. And we also aim to carry out this work further by colorizing the videos of the past heroes like Charlie Chaplin. Lastly, we also want our model to be deployed on a web platform so that it is accessible for the users worldwide and they can convert their old black and white photos to colorized form. Lastly, if you like this video and this amazing project, please consider to subscribe our channel. I am going to bring a lot of projects in this domain. Thank you.